So let's talk now about reference triangles and reference angles. We're going back to what we were just doing with the coterminal angles. We're rotating in our xy axis, and we're going to start, boom, right there. That's always our starting spot, our zero degrees, right there on the x-axis. And let's say that I'm rotating, let's just say, 30 degrees. Okay, so there's my terminal side. I guess I didn't really say that before. We call that the terminal side because that's where the rotation ends. And then the other one's called the initial side sometimes. This is often called the initial side for obvious reasons. Start there. Right. Okay, so lots of times, and this will become clear uh, later on, lots of times we find it useful to make a little reference triangle to help us find the relationship between the angle that we've rotated and the, the lengths of the sides of the triangle that's formed. So the way you make your little reference triangle, it's really fun. You start at your terminal side and you just drop down a perpendicular line. Sometimes I think about a little guy standing up there and he drops, drops down the line. And you're always um, going either down or up to the x-axis because that was your initial side. That's where you started your rotation. And there you go. There's your little reference triangle. So this would be x. That's the number of units I go out on my x-axis. This would be y. Very good. <laughs> and sometimes we just call this r for radius or because it is the radius of a circle. And yeah. I keep going. You can call that whatever you want. But not x or y. But not x or y. Exactly. Okay? Now, the reference angle is always this little guy right here. It's the Angle that's created between the x-axis and our terminal side. And that crazy symbol you just drew? Yeah, I'm glad you referenced that. That crazy symbol is a Greek letter, theta. And basically, it's just a variable. It's like an x or a y. You know why we use Greek letters in trigonometry? To be more confusing? Yes. No. <laughs> the Greeks were very instrumental in developing trigonometry. So were lots of other folks. But anyway, lots of times Greek letters are used for variables instead of x, y, and z, just as a tribute to our Greek forefathers and foremothers. Very nice. So theta is often used to designate an angle. Now, it's a little confusing. Sometimes theta is used to designate your rotation. Sometimes it's used to designate the reference angle. But you usually can figure out what it means from the context. So let's try it in a couple other quadrants. We have to review our quadrants too, mm -hmm. right? We're going to be talking about quadrants a lot in trigonometry. So we have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Mr. Paley, give me a nice angle that terminates in quadrant two. Terminates, so it ends in quadrant two. Yeah. So there it looks go. like it has to be between 90 and 180. Yes. There's 90, so we'll just go at 110. 110, boom. Okay, so I just rotated 110 degrees in my positive direction. Ooh, that's going to be hard to draw a triangle for. I, I, well, you might think so, but if you think about your little guy standing at the end of the terminal side, and you drop down your line, boom, 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 to the x-axis. Now this is the part that's a little weird, and we'll talk about this in class. This is our terminal, oh sorry, this is our reference triangle right here. So the 110 shows us where our reference triangle exists, and it tells us how many degrees are left here. So this is going to be my reference angle. So remember, your reference angle is always the number of degrees from the x-axis to your terminal side. So this is going to be my reference angle right here. If I went 110, what's that reference angle going to be? Very good, 70. Yeah, because you know, of course, that those angles have to be supplementary. supplementary. They have to add to 180. Now, did it matter where you dropped your perpendicular I triangle? I'm so glad you asked that. No. You could have gone way out. It didn't change the angle. It could have gone way in. Yeah. It didn't change the angle. It doesn't change the angle. Okay. And again, this would be our x. Now, 
What's going to be true about our x, Mr. Paley? Is it going to be positive or negative there? Well, I need to go to the left, right? So it's that's a negative left. x. Yeah, so that value is going to be negative. That's going to come up later. Okay. Y is going to still be positive. Positive. It's going up. And your radius, by definition, is always positive. That's just a rotating arm that is always, by definition, positive. Okay? So these are all reference triangles and reference angles. And again, you're always doing it relating to the x-axis. So if I'm terminating in the fourth quadrant, let's Ooh. say, let's say... Zero, 90, 180... 270, 270. Where should I stop? 300. 300, beautiful. So let's say I rotated 300 degrees in the positive direction. So how much does that leave me there for that little reference angle? Yeah, 60 degrees right there. Reference triangle, here I go. Now I'm going up. It's always in relationship to the x-axis because that's where I started. You make your little right triangle. This is going to be your x, this is your y, that's still your rotating arm. So again, your rotating arm by definition is always positive. How about your y? Mr. Paley, what do you think? Is down, that, so negative. That's going down, so that's going to have a negative value. And your x? Positive. Going yep. to the right, so that's going to have a positive value. Okay? Now, you're going to see how all this works and how this helps you find trig ratios and relationships between the angles and the sides. But for now, that's all you need to know about reference angles and reference triangles. Thanks, Mr. Taylor. You're welcome.